What you tell yourself, you believe. This is a proven psychological fact. So we really have to choose wisely what we say to ourselves, what we believe about ourselves, what we believe about the world around us. Because the second type of stress is called psychological stress. And it's solely in our mind. It is completely self-induced. It is those things that we tell ourselves, like spiders are scary, snakes are yucky, I, I don't do that well, I can't run, I can't go back to school, I can't do implants. It's all these I can'ts, I won'ts, I'm afraid ofs. So the coping methods for psychological stress are these. One, first and foremost, you must challenge your belief system, which means having friends, colleagues, even people on social media that diametrically oppose you. And this is something we're not very good about nowadays. We like to surround ourselves with people that make us feel validated and comfortable because that feels good. Because when we have people in our lives that oppose us, that challenge us, it triggers our stress response and we want to get away from that. But it's actually a good thing. It's helping us view the world in a different way. And how we perceive the world is actually the definition of stress and our ability to manage and navigate it. So even though you might not agree with those individuals that are on the opposite side of whatever subject, whether it's Yankees and the Red Sox, or whether it's our political system, or whether it's you know, SRPs or Profi, whatever the, whatever the topic. Get someone who is equally as passionate and respectful that you can engage with them and, and really help you challenge your belief system. Next coping method is self-development. And this is where you can read books, take courses, webinars that really e expand your self-reflection ability. And yes, I'm talking about meditation or yoga or some of that foo-foo stuff. If you don't go internal, you're not going to address your psychological stress. You can't go to the gym and exercise away your psychological stress. You can't lay on the couch and relax your body and get rid of your psychological stress because you want to know what you're doing when you're laying on the couch? Worrying. It actually takes internal coping methods to address an internal problem. This is what you educate your patients around with SRPs all the time. No, there's no pill, there's no antibiotic, and yes, you have to go through the procedure of scaling and replaning, and it really is this expensive because of your gum disease. A Profi will not do it. It is the wrong treatment for the condition. And this is the same for psychological, psychological stress and when you try and use external coping methods to get rid of it. Another coping method for psychological stress is to make sure that your environment, what you see, isn't chaotic. So I have a rule, no post-it notes ever. No post-it notes ever. Not that I don't like them or support them, I do. But unfortunately, go into your office and look around your computer. Look around your kitchen with you and your family. How many post-it notes do you guys have, little messages? We were just talking here at Patient Prism about how someone writes a note to their spouse, takes a picture of the post-it note, and texts them the picture of the post-it note. Oh, can you imagine? Walking into your office with all these post-it notes creates chaos in our brain. It doesn't know where to focus. It doesn't know where to go. So it actually triggers our stress response. And I'm sure you feel that little rush of panic, adrenaline, whatever it might be, but you feel a little twing of some chemical flooding through your, your veins. That's cortisol. Because your stress response is being triggered by simply what you see. So use calendar management. Use a, a notepad. Use Evernote. Use technology. Um, 
Use a, a journal where you can write these things down in one place and develop a system that you can share it with other people. Now, the last thing, coping method for psychological stress, and it's so important, and that is to increase your level of curiosity. Please, please, please never use the word why to start a question when you're asking it of anybody but yourself. For example, why did you choose to wear the clothes you're wearing today? Why do you practice what you do? Why did you marry the person you married? Or why are you with the person you're with? See, my tone of voice, I've got a smile on my face. I'm leaning forward. I'm using open body language. But it doesn't matter. The word why in the English language makes you justify and defend. You have to explain yourself to others. And as adults, we don't like to do that. So as a leader, as a manager, as a spouse, never ask, why are we having turkey for Thanksgiving? because you just might end up cooking it.